Good morning. Welcome to Tara at Home. We are here with uh, Tony from Valley Brook Gardens, and uh, thanks for joining us this morning, Tony. Good so morning. We're, we're talking about, uh, obviously, midsummer, right now at the beginning of August, beautiful summer gardens, but uh, in particular perennials. And uh, some people are just annual growers, and some people, you know, have that combination. But uh, something about perennials is, is, is really fantastic is that they seem to alter throughout the course of the summer. And yeah. you can plant accordingly to get proper color um, and really fill your garden and for the long the season just stretch it right out into the fall. So let's talk a little bit about some people choose to do planters mm -hmm. or a combination again of right into directly into the ground. So if we're talking about planting uh, perennials and again some people are choosing to do that as we move at this point through into the season you can continue to plant Absolutely. perennials all Absolutely. through the summer. Absolutely. Plant all summer I usually find it's best to uh, if you're if you're an avid gardener mm -hmm. visit the garden center uh, as the season goes on. Most people have the idea that gardening can only be done in May uh, yes, but you can true. certainly continue to plant in uh, June, July, August, September. Mm -hmm. um, and the advantage of that is when you visit the garden center during the summer months, you see things in bloom that wouldn't have been blooming in spring. So uh, it gives you an idea of what plants are available mm -hmm. uh, to give you color mm -hmm. uh, as the summer goes on. That's actually a really good point because I, I, I was sort of one of those people too where I kind of just did because I, I generally gear myself around annuals and but now I'm starting to learn more and more mm -hmm. and I that is actually a really valid point is that I, again people just sort of think well I'm done yeah. now. But you don't need to be done. You don't need to be done. And and it is, I found for me, I've been doing this for about 12 years now. And mm -hmm. I've, I've worked in this industry for about 25 years. So <laughs> I've, I've had lots of exposure. Yes. Um, but 12 years ago, we bought this house and I started gardening. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm beginning to discover it's a process. It's, it's a journey. It's not a one-time thing. You mm -hmm. don't. Uh, plant a garden in May and look at it for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. You uh, enjoy it, you know, as the summer goes on, and then you add to it as time goes by. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, I've been at this for about 10, 12 years here, and every year I put a new bed in and find a few new plants that I want to add to the collection. And that's the thing too, is I always thought people who planted perennial gardens, it was the same thing. It was just like you were done now, yeah. and every year they just they're a little more mature and they grow and they do yeah. and they do develop, and you do see that the fullness as they as they as each year passes. But I didn't realize, but now I realize is that people get very excited by the new plants yeah. and the new hybrids and, yes. and all the combinations that are out there. So are you taking a bunch of things out and replanting or are you just adding? I'm not necessarily taking things out. Mm -hmm. I certainly add new things mm -hmm. as they come along. Uh, at Working at uh, Valley Brook Gardens, we grow the heritage line of perennials mm -hmm. and of course uh, we add about 100, 120 new items to the lineup every year. Wow. And from that, there's always a, a couple or a dozen or maybe two dozen that attract my attention. That <laughs> I uh, find time to shoehorn into the garden somewhere. I think it's amazing. Uh, I don't necessarily dig things up to replace it, but mm -hmm. you know, invariably some things die or don't do as well. Those sure. get removed, mm -hmm. um, or I just add a new bed mm -hmm. as I've done over the years. So as you would uh, would know with your experiences, you're you're looking at your garden. You you need to evaluate sort of the where your garden's sitting in terms of the conditions, the shade, yep. and the sun, um, and then also in terms of height as well and color. Yes. So there's there's a lot to think about. There's a lot to think about, and but it, I shouldn't be overwhelming right from the get-go. I mean, start small, uh, mm -hmm. start, you know, one section at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, read the tags of the plants that you're buying at the nursery. It'll mm -hmm. tell you the heights of them on uh, the tag. Uh, it will also tell you the ideal location as far as full sun, part sun, shade, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I found even that can be confusing for some consumers. Yes, I can if, see that. If it says sun on the tag, it doesn't necessarily mean it needs sun from 6 in the morning until 8 at night. And that's uh, when they don't do so well, maybe. And that's sometimes <laughs> when they don't do so right. well. It yeah. can be too hot. Reevaluate. Um, <laughs> Reevaluate, but gen just very generally what those uh, mean. If it says full sun, if you can give the plant four to six hours or more mm -hmm. of sunlight, it will be fine. That's what it uh, means. If it says part sun, mm -hmm. usually two to four hours, uh, it will do okay, or more is, is fine as well. Okay. Um, and plants that require shade uh, doesn't mean that they don't like sun at all. Uh, quite often, things like hostas, things like ferns, mm -hmm. uh, heucheras, which are shade plants, mm -hmm. um, are fine in morning sun, they're fine in late day sun. What they don't like is the hot midday sun. Okay, so those are actually really good tips. So again, it's about knowing your garden, really knowing how the sun passes through your garden, yeah. and of course it's changing as the season goes on too, yeah. right? As you're getting into into uh, late August and September. Um, now when it comes to, you know, again, the color and really looking at seeing a plant, as you say, at this time of year you can go in and see the stage it's at now. Mm -hmm. But uh, really, if you want your garden looking beautiful and full and if you want color, 
then it's best to really, again, read the tags and get uh, an example, you know, talking to the folks at Terra as well, and uh, in, in getting a, an idea of when that color is going to happen right. so that you're having it changing constantly through yeah. the season. Yeah, and that, again, as I mentioned before, that's also the, the advantage of visiting the garden center in June and July and August. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do your shopping in May, things like echinaceas, things like lavenders, things like Russian sage, there's no color on them. You're mm -hmm. buying a green plant, mm -hmm. um, so you're not really sure, yeah, other than the, the color picture, <laughs> yes. uh, what it is that you're getting. Right. Okay, so now we ha we're sitting around a lot of potted perennials. So why would someone pot perennials? I, I always just think about them being directly planted into the ground. Yeah. Uh, well, in my case, as you can probably see behind me, mm -hmm. it's uh, by necessity. There is no place to plant here. It's a big concrete <laughs> so slab. So you just want to fill it up with so green. So I just started, it, and again, mm -hmm. it started small. It didn't always have however many pots I have now on it. Mm -hmm. um, but because I've always worked in the perennial industry, I started planting perennials in mm -hmm. containers. and remarkably most of them do quite well and they survive in the pots as well so hmm. um, I think there's a perception out there that if you've got things in pots that it needs to be brought in the house for winter and right. that's not true. No not true nothing here goes in the house really um, the, the most important consideration probably for planting in containers is drainage it has to have a drainage hole and okay. it has to have good drainage so um, try adding four or five inches of gravel at the bottom of mm -hmm. the pot to help uh, facilitate drainage. Okay. Um, it's not the cold I've discovered that kills plants over winter uh, if you have them in containers. It's the fact that they get really wet uh, late winter, early spring, right. and the, the roots it's are simply sitting rotting. in there. Yep. Oh, well, that's actually a really good point. I love that. That's actually really good information to know. And again, this is valid information for people who this is all they have. Now, you have a beautiful yard we've been, we're sitting at, but some people, this is all they have. Nowadays, with the smaller spaces and being even in a condo environment, yep. This is, this is Th what they have to do This can be done on balconies. This can be done on a small deck if that's all you right. have in the garden. You know, if you like to have plants around you. And it, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily limited to perennials, although that's sure. what I no. do. No. Uh, I, I, you can probably see I've got blueberries growing in containers and mm -hmm. trees. So it's, you know, whatever strikes your fancy. If mm -hmm. you can grow it in the garden, you can grow it in a pot. And I think that's, that is definitely one thing I've learned. And again, also having, as you say, having a full-on fruits and vegetables and then yeah. having your other perennials. You, you, you've got... You've got a great little garden that you can make in the smallest of spaces. Exactly. Okay, so when we talk about wintering, what about uh, some of the perennials that you have planted directly into the ground um, in your garden? Uh, are any considerations that need to be made when you're overwintering with them? Uh, the most important consideration is the zone. Now, in the GTA area, we're zone six, five, and some of the outlying areas. Mm -hmm. uh, that information is on the back of the of the plant labels that you buy, ah, and what okay. that refers to is the uh, minimum winter temperatures the plant will tolerate uh, before okay. it succumbs. So, uh, zone uh, just to give you an idea. Idea. Florida is zone 10, mm -hmm. the Canadian Arctic is zero, so okay. we're on the happy side we're of halfway. Happy side. Okay. <laughs> See, this is good. All right, so learning very much. So thank you so much, Tony, again, letting us come into your space today. And again, it makes people realize that you can have perennials and you can have beautiful gardens even in the tiniest little place, as long as you take care of them. Good, good drainage and knowing your climate. Know your climate. Know and your it's climate. about enjoyment, right? Yes. It's about enjoying your space. Exactly. All right, thanks, Tony. We'll have more Tara at home after this. where color lives. Heritage Perennials, look for us in the blue pots. Good morning, welcome back to Tara at Home. We're here with Ricardo at Body One Fitness in Dundas, and this yep. is your place. 
This is my place. Yes, yeah. so this is a great little spot. So tell me a, a little bit about the concept and, and I guess really where it comes from for you. Obviously, you, you live and breathe fitness because of your background. I do. Yeah. I've been constantly in, um, working out since uh, mm -hmm. high school uh, football mm -hmm. and university football. And I, again, I'm a you know great fan of fitness. So And let's talk about your martial arts background. Okay. Don't be uh, humble. Well, <laughs> I, I try not to. Well, I am a third, I'm a third degree. I'm a third degree black belt in, uh, in a Korean martial art called Hapkido, and it's basically uh, it's based on the principle of uh, a circular type motion. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of joint locks, almost like the MMA stuff that you see on TV. Yeah, but it's very cool. To, it, it, to it is. Watch, this is it? It, it is it is yeah. very cool. Well, good for you. Congratulations you. on that one because you. you should be very proud of that. So <laughs> from that, of course, become you you get a full background knowledge. Again, you're looking at fitness from a, from an athlete's point of view, from as you say, from from sport, from football, yeah. as well as just everyday lifestyle fitness. So, so you've managed to tie that all in to bring it right down to a female coming in just to stay fit. I did, I did, and uh, basically this environment is based more or less for female clients. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a non-intimidating. Uh, atmosphere as you can see mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know we want them to come in feel empowered we want them to feel comfortable so mm -hmm. you know that's kind of how we okay so how do you here. do that how do you gear women and, and get women because you're getting some that may really have never been that active their whole lives and then and, and they are afraid to come in and, and what what gets somebody I guess s certain people are interested in certain types of exercise it's more fun for them and en encourage them to come back yeah some are interested in like stability ball training for mm -hmm. example this is what I, I have here in front of me this yep. is a it's an 85 centimeter stability ball and again this is this is this is pretty simple uh, it empowers them a lot because uh, they're engaging a lot of uh, muscle fibers, lost a lot of muscle group while they're exercising on this ball. Mm -hmm. For example, I was going to put you on here to basically do like a bicep curl on this uh, particular exercise of this ball here. And if I can just get you to probably sit down on here mm. facing this way. <laughs> you know? Okay, so like that and then this back yep. this way? So basically, okay. yeah, I want you to sit up tall, so okay. come back a little bit tall. more. Perfect. Now I want okay. you to drop your arms right at your side here with these dumbbells. Okay. Now one of the things you want to try to focus on is keeping your core, which is your abs and your back and your quad, tight as you can. Oh, so you're going to try to pull your belly button into your back. Okay. I want you to turn those dumbbells out to your side like so. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And I want you to curl them just about the chest level about here. Okay. And I want you to extend them right back down to about here and then all the way back down. Oh, there right. Okay. Now again, you're firing off using, like I said, your core, your biceps mm -hmm. being worked. Yep. Right. If you want to make this a little bit harder, we can just get you to pick one leg up off the floor. So now, now you, you're going to feel exactly going to feel yes. the, the, uh, the stability that you have to try to work and trying to keep yourself uh, And that's balanced. the thing where the stability ball comes in versus just doing a bicep curl standing. Exactly. If I had you standing on the floor, the floor is a flat surface. Right. It's secure, whereas this, the instability of uh, mm -hmm. the ball makes it harder. Yeah. So you gotta You're constantly working, right? Exactly. I so love that. That's really smart. And it, I mean, there's a million things you can do on this, there's too. Like, over a million you can possibly yeah. do on yeah. here. Yeah, so that's really that's really smart. Okay, so that's actually really, it's very firm too, so you're getting, again, it's forcing you to, you're not just kind of sitting down into it, you really have to work it. Exactly. Okay, so this is something, again, you can actually do almost like a, when someone's coming in, is this more of a one-on-one -on -one or do you do a bit of a class? We, we do, we do several things here. You can do either a group uh, mm -hmm. setting, maybe two or three people, mm -hmm. or majority of my stuff is done one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. That's okay. what we try to, uh, yeah. to have here is yeah. basically have you one on one with the trainer, either myself or one of my staff. Yeah. And when you're doing that, when you're with a trainer, it, it forces you to take it up a notch way more than you ever would push yourself, right? It, it, it does. It does. Yeah. Like, I'm actually here to basically gauge how far you can basically, you'll possibly push yourself, right? Mm -hmm. and even though you are going to try to challenge yourself a little bit more when you are here with me, mm -hmm. I'm actually at the point where I can say, okay, this is probably enough that you're going to. You know, shut it down or maybe move it up a uh -huh. little bit more. Oh, yeah, I definitely noticed that when, you know, because I mean, a lot the gym, you're like, oh, today I'm a little tired. I'm just going to go to 12 or I'm just going to do, you know, where you, maybe you could have pushed yourself to 15 or whatever, right? That's true. Mm -hmm. That's okay, true. Or, or you get lazy with the weight. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, so stability ball stuff. Should we move on and talk a little bit we, about. Uh, we can we move on to something else. Mm -hmm. uh, another aspect of uh, training that we offer here mm -hmm. is something called, uh, you know, box fitness or. or um, uh, oh, okay. Boxer size, Boxer box, size. There's so many different ways. Exactly, right? but like, you know, like my hybrid is uh, it's a combination of boxing and, uh, and martial art, like we right. talked earlier about, is uh, the you know, keto uh, mix with the boxing. So we try to teach you and empower you again how to uh, basically defend yourself if you have to defend yourself. Because what I find is is play become action in, in, in real life situations. So mm -hmm. playing around, showing you these different combination of punching and kicking and stuff like that, mm -hmm. basically get you in the frame that you know what I can possibly defend myself. If I had to out on the street. 
-hmm. And it's also fun too mm -hmm. for you. Well, that's right? the thing. So I'm just going to put these down over here. Okay. So this makes you more confident as it a does. person as well. Not only not only with your your strength and uh, and again inflexibility and all that, but as you're mentioning, because it is a form of self-defense, yep. it's just going to it just makes you more aware. It does. Okay, it makes so you if someone's more aware coming your at body, you, you exactly kind of body, the distance between you and a, an opponent. Is, if you can see basically the preamble to what I, I find is uh, is warfare in a sense, right? You can mm -hmm. tell um, how a person's getting yeah, uh, from the language. agitation. Exactly, uh, you know, I mean, raising my voice or I may be coming into you, trying to threaten you, right. um, looking in a certain way or menacing to you this way. Yep. Those are things that, you know, you'll mm -hmm. be aware of that I'll be teaching you uh, mm -hmm. with the boxer size and the martial arts. Okay, basically. so teach me something that uh, I move that you Well, here, here's a pretty simple one, right? Okay. Like throwing basically a jab at you, right? I wanna, want you to throw a jab at me. Okay, so you want so me to like, come I'm gonna come throw across? this here, yeah, I'm, gonna yeah. block, uh, I'm blocking this thing. Yeah. What I wanna do is throw a punch right here in there. into this. I'm okay. also gonna grab here and oh, go I'm with with the kick, right? <laughs> so those are several things we that. do. Um, again, but uh, till it becomes a natural reaction, right? Exactly. So if you're training that, and you keep doing that. That's going to become more exactly. of an actual reaction. Okay, okay, someone's going to punch at me. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go bam, exactly. right? And then exactly. I love that. But, well, like I said, it, it, you know, it becomes play for you, right? So mm -hmm. the more time that you do this, mm -hmm. it, it, it is it is play. You know, when it, it does happen in, in real life, mm -hmm. it, it just becomes a natural thing for yeah. you to do. And we notice when, and I always think, okay, when I look at an athlete, so you're looking at someone in martial arts. Yeah. Martial artists are ripped. Right, because they are using it in their abs, and they're constantly this, and then they're you know, exactly. ducking, weaving it's, in. Right, exactly. It's from uh, again, like you said, mm -hmm. from the, the the movement of the you mm -hmm. know the blocking and mm -hmm. and weaving and stuff like yep. that. You know, they do have good uh, core stability, muscle. Yep. Um, you know, arms, mm -hmm. back, mm -hmm. all those things are basically yeah. pretty well defined because they're using. Uh, a lot of, well, they're mm -hmm. throwing a lot of punches and stuff like that and kicking and stuff. So that's really fun. So again, that's a great that's a great aspect to introduce women into fitness if they've never done anything yep. before. So um, how would somebody get registered? How would, how could someone well, come they in? can just call 905-628-6806 uh, mm -hmm. or they can go online mm -hmm. and, uh, and Google us or mm -hmm. uh, www.bodyonefitness.com okay. or they can call or email mm -hmm. ricardo at bodyonefitness.com okay. and it's the number one fitness not yeah. Uh, o -N -E. Okay, and basically set up something, come in and have yep. a consultation with you and just That's kind of say, okay, where do I want to go from here? What do I want to learn? And yeah, we would uh, actually sit down with the client or the female and discuss what their goals are, mm -hmm. you know, also what my goals that I see that you can be doing to get you to that yeah, next for, stage. Yeah, for your, for your age, for yep. your, I guess, where you're sitting at at that point in time, again, if you have any background in fitness or not, so yeah. That's Very perfectly good. Fine. Well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. That's really good information. So Thank you guys you. are located right here. Great little spot and uh, really good equipment and uh, and good uh, good education, good talent here that Thank can you. help us out. Thanks, Ricardo. Good yeah. stuff. Thank All right, you. we'll have more tarot at home after this. Where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plant locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Good morning. Welcome back to Tara at Home. We're in the kitchen with Chef Rachel. And, um, okay, we're making a, something we both love. Uh, yes. Chicken sandwiches, but again, all kind of chopped up. You have shredded and chopped and... Yeah, so we're doing chicken salad two ways. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, I mean, chicken salad's a great idea on a, you know, on a sandwich or in a pita like we're going to do it mm -hmm. for a light lunch or, or dinner, mm -hmm. right, in the summertime. Yeah, Easy to make, delicious. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do it because you can really put anything into your, into your chicken salad. I was going to say, like, just, you know, we were talking about how if you just had chicken on its own, it can be kind of just very dry, mm -hmm. right? So by adding, you're adding elements of fruit and some different textures, then it just... 
makes it very professional and fancy. <laughs> it does. A little different because growing yeah. up when I had chicken salad, it was always just, you know, a little bit of celery, some onion. That's right. Maybe some pepper and mayonnaise. That's it. And I mean, that's good, but let's kick it up a notch. You okay? Okay. All right. So, first start with the chicken. So, mm -hmm. I've cooked up a couple chicken breasts and um, so for the for this our sweet peach chicken salad. Mm -hmm. We're going to use the cube chicken. Mm -hmm. And then for our curry chicken salad, I've just cut it up a different way. So I call it shredded. I'm not actually shredding it, but I'm mm -hmm. just cutting it really quickly and, and thin, thing. right? Yeah. Just yeah. just roughly to get that shred kind of effect. Okay. So that's and again, I you know, it. I think is also great is when you buy those chickens in the store, and sometimes you don't get through the whole thing. So you, you can, or you could just use that, use and, and chop up that kind of chicken as well because it's very convenient. It's already cooked, and it's yeah. a good leftover in the fridge kind of thing to exactly. do. Exactly, right? great way to use the leftovers. Good thing for leftovers. Okay. Okay. So this one I have to say is my favorite. All right. So you start with a little bit of of mayonnaise, mm -hmm. and usually I just I just mix it to um, you know to taste, and mm -hmm. I get the consistency that I like, but we'll add a little bit of sour cream in. Oh, you're putting sour cream in there. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> My secret. So again, okay. good thing about this, of course, you could use light mayo and light sour cream exactly. and really, really lighten it up. Yeah. Okay, okay oh, so mix that up. together. And then at this time is when I mix in the curry powder. So about a tablespoon or so is probably good. This is mm -hmm. a medium curry powder. I like to add a little bit more because I like it really curry. So again, mm -hmm. I just kind of do it to um, you know, by, by eye. Yes. And see what it looks like. I like to be nice and yellow. Mm -hmm. Just add a little bit at a time. I mean, I don't really think you can add too much, to be honest. Well, it's amazing how easy that is to do, though, right? It's just so straightforward. And I think sometimes people are still afraid to use curries. You know, they're not sure, you know, what, how much to put in and whether it's going right. to make it taste crazy. But it's right. just so but, I mean, easy to make that. Oh. If you're making curry chicken salad, it's awesome. You want to be able to taste mm -hmm. it, right? Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit more. <laughs> She's lost all control. I have. <laughs> okay, and then we can add in the chicken and our other toppings. So okay. I've cut up um, some red onion. That'll be good. Really thin. Mm -hmm. Small. Tiny little pieces. Because you don't want a big chunk of no. onion. You know what would be good in this too? Mango. Mango would mango be very would good. Be good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> make up your own. Just go crazy. Yeah, we'll put in the shredded chicken now. Okay. And then I've got some green grapes and cranberries, cranberries we can add. I love that. That's a cool combo. Yeah, so different. So you get a little mm -hmm. bit of sweetness. Again, add more mayonnaise at any time if you if you have to. Oh, that's really fun. Mm. And this is my favorite. It's so good. So I'll add in some chopped green grapes and, uh, and the cranberries as well. So it's, it's colorful, nice and colorful and again texture and giving little bursts of flavor. Yeah, I'm gonna add in a little bit more mayonnaise little bit as chicken. well. And then that one's that's awesome. All done. So again, obviously, you said you know you could do it open face. You could put it on really cool like focaccia bread, or you mm. could do it again keeping it lighter. You have whole wheat pitas, so yeah, that's actually uh, that's a great idea. Okay, yum. Okay, so that's the first one done there. All right, one down. One down, one to go. So let's make a little bit of room here. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> next. Can we pass so this to the next one? Okay. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll use this spoon. So this one, we're just going to use the mayonnaise. I've got some uh, green onion and celery. Mm -hmm. So I'll put that in. Our cubed chicken. And then this one, I'm going to put some red grapes. Again, keep it colorful. Mm -hmm. I notice these. you have your peaches are sliced, so are you adding those afterwards? Yeah, we'll put okay. those on the top. Okay. Okay, let's add in the chicken now, because there's lots of mayonnaise in here. And we can season it with salt and pepper as well. I was going to ask about that, right? So again, you were mentioning that the chicken's already been seasoned when you're cooking it a little bit. Yes. Just to give it, because chicken really doesn't have any flavor at all. So, and then you can add a little bit more to this one. Hmm. And that's a little bit more um, closer to what traditional chicken salad you would see. Yes. As we were talking about, you know, maybe putting apple in mm -hmm. or different types of fruit. That would work really well. Really good. Have lots of fun. And herbs too, right? Yeah. So that's a great oh, point that you here. brought up there. Actually, I was going to add in a little bit of red onion to this yeah, one as well. Yeah, that would be good. Which is why I cut a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. So I'll put that to the side. Sure. And this one, I was just going to add a little bit of tarragon. Yes. <clears> and I've seen that in chicken salad before. That is. That's good flavor. Some people don't love it though, right? I guess, but I think it's a really good flavor. Is it is, yeah, it is a little bit 
um, mm -hmm. of a different herb, not one mm -hmm. that I use very often. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little, it resembles anise a little bit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, the, in the smell. Right. Um, goes well with, uh, with chicken, as we're doing here, fish, yes. eggs. Okay. Are those the things, or, sorry, those are the things mm -hmm. that it, uh, it pairs best with. It's not something that I use very often, but I think no. in this salad it'll go really nice. Yep. Yep. And, you know, if you just put a little bit in, just so you have a little bit of the taste, it's not overpowering. Yeah, no, it's good, though. It does add a nice flavor to it. You, you do see it, actually, as you said, in, with eggs, egg salad, that type of thing. Very good. Mm, so good. There we go. So we'll mix that in. <clears throat> and then I'm using uh, some arugula, as I have here. Arugula is my favorite, as you know. Mm -hmm. Me too. <clears throat> to put um, in the pita before we actually add in the chicken salad. Okay. Um, but you can use any kind of lettuce or even some some sprouts would be nice. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. some broccoli sprouts yes, or alfalfa exactly. sprouts. exactly. And that's the thing. So you kind of <clears throat> can just sort of get creative and sort of what you like to see in, in your pita. Um, and again, so you're not mixing any of salads or anything greens with that. You're keeping that separate, putting it in. It, mm -hmm. Again, I think appearance-wise, it looks better. And again, it's not softening this too much, right? Yes. Okay. All right, what we're going to do is we'll come back from break. We're going to assemble these and show you the final product. where color lives. Welcome back to Tara at Home in the Kitchen. Uh, again, putting it together a light uh, summer meal with Chef Rachel. We're talking about chicken salad two ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, to recap, we basically, we've mixed these together now, our two different versions. Mm -hmm. That one with curry. Yep, we have curry, green grapes chopped up with some um, dried cranberries. Obviously our curry powder, mm -hmm. a little bit of salt and pepper, uh, some onion. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And then in this one here, we've got the chopped chicken with mm -hmm. the celery, green onion, red grapes mm -hmm. and we're going to top it off with some peach slices. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, this is so. summer for sure. Okay. So, so any kind of pita, right. these are whole wheat, mm -hmm. carefully open them up and uh, and put a little bit of arugula in and that kind of creates like a, a base for it to sit on. We want it to, yeah, to look nice, actually, especially if fall out the bottom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, exactly. A big giant mess. And I so. always thought this just tastes good on toast too. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? It just does. I've made why. this um, in the past and just, you know, put it on a little cracker yeah, that's as right. an appetizer. So like a little fancy, especially like the little curry yeah. mayo one. It looks so cute. As you say, putting in a little cracker. That's right, because you yeah. have lots of catering too. Mm -hmm. ah, see, yeah, good. so we can, just for color, top it off with some fresh grapes and, mm -hmm. and the cranberries so you can see, you know. Mm -hmm. Presentation. Well, as we're assembling if you're these, just a reminder, of course, you can find all of Chef Rachel's recipes on our website, Tara Greenhouses. Woo, woo, that's awesome, go. that's awesome. <laughs> Dot com. Oh. And, okay, <laughs> yeah. and finally this and guy. Mm -hmm. Yep, so, so many different ways that you can. Go ahead. And of course, you as you were mentioning, these. using sprouts or using whatever you like to mm -hmm. add to it. Yep. And I can't wait to try these. I'm glad you made lots, because we're all you. hungry. <laughs> oh, yeah, always. <laughs> You're good. I gotta feed you. Yes, you, you happy. do, you know. That's what we love we're working with you, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Very good. So and scoop this in. Yeah, and then just top it with the sliced okay. peaches. If you want to chop up the peaches and put it inside, mm -hmm. works just as well. All right, very yeah. good. Well, thank you. That's awesome. Thank good you. Good summer meal. All right, that's it for Tara at Home today. Have yourself a great weekend.